Hello and welcome to another fun-filled edition of Adam's Music Box, where today we celebrate the release of the Black Album by Metallica. And this came out in 1991 when hard rock and heavy metal were really at a kind of crossroads. Now, a video on this album wouldn't be complete without a none more black joke. Uh, of course, that's taken from Spinal Tap, a film that came out in the early 1980s and mocked some of the pretentiousness that surrounded heavy metal and progressive type of rock music um, at the time and sort of the rock industry more, ge more, more generally. And it's really Really become in the intervening 40 some years a great time capsule for a music industry that was just bloated with excess money, drugs, um, drink, you know, big limousines and all the stuff that isn't there today. And that film, though, certainly didn't kill off the excesses of heavy rock and heavy metal. Um, instead, those genres became increasingly more popular throughout the 80s. And the charts were generally dominated by the more melodic and more glamorous uh types of heavy metal bands. Let's call them the FM-friendly side of metal. Think your white snakes, who were really not a metal band, they really are a blues-based hard rock band but they because of the production on the 1987 album that bore a lot of similarities to the self-consciously glam metal bands of the time it's often called a, a heavy metal classic again these terms should not be considered as set in aspect set in stone as one would like um then there was guns and roses who even though on the one hand they were from la and they cultivated some of that glam image they were also much much more down to earth and hardcore than let's say your poisons or what motley crew had become by then so there was already a kind of writing on the wall for bands that were going to take metal out of the hairspray section and into the cut off sleeve section if you will because as frank zappa said music is successful when you can dress up to it now, Metallica were actually around longer than Guns N' Roses, but they had a steady climb from being a totally underground band to a cult band, to a band that was selling records and getting on MTV, to a band that by 1991 became the biggest heavy metal band on the planet. And a lot of that was down to this album, the Black Album, because it had a lot of wonderful songs, but one in particular set both the F FM airwaves alight because of what it's one of the best riffs of all time, very memorable lyrics, and it had a hard edge to it that kind of declared that the 90s is here and that the more sort of, you know, melodic, glammy, hairspray, let's get the girls metal is on its way out and the darker uh, type of metal that Metallica always stood for is in. And obviously they weren't alone. There were other bands that were already in the mid 80s having a very much harder edge sound than the commercial metal. You had your bands like Slayer, uh, you had Megadeth, which obviously Dave Mustaine, original Metallica guitarist. We all know about the drama, the melodrama and the he said, he said about all of that. But when you really have to pin down a pivotal moment when a different kind of metal became mainstream it was with the release of this album and the popularity of enter sandman and um, this was interesting because while this changed the nature of metal a lot of metal bands weren't able to adapt and then frankly almost at the same time as this you have the rise of grunge which was a much more stripped down much less hard edge but almost equally dark, but in different places, style of rock that came to dominate the charts in the early 90s alongside hip hop, which had become an absolutely mainstream genre by now. But while many metal bands and many hard rock bands, some of which began in the 70s, like White Snake, and some of which began in the 80s, your, your Dio's, even though he obviously has 70s pedigree, they didn't necessarily make it intact through the 90s. Metallica did. Um, so it seems like every album that they had uh, after Kill 'Em All, there are always people, you're selling out this time, you're selling out this time. But 
Metallica is a survivor and everyone has their favorite era. Um, so, so when Cliff died, it was over. But e like I said, everyone has a favorite album and a favorite era. But insofar as the wider public consciousness, apart from the hardcore fans that they had, this was a moment that said it is possible to survive as a very viable stadium touring heavy metal act in an age of grunge, which was never really stadium friendly, much like punk rock was never stadium friendly or in an age of hip-hop which again um not stadium friendly it's music born out of the clubs and streets and it can do well in theaters and even in arenas but not really stadiums it can be made to work and people like uh yay formerly kanye west have made it work in stadiums but only because a lot of theatrics is attached to it metallica though was flying the flag of stadium heavy hard rock heavy metal at a time when it wasn't necessarily easy to do so and they continue to do it in the 21st century when it really isn't easy to do so because forget heavy metal rock in general has retreated from the front of the consciousness of the pop charts but metallica is a survivor and without this album it's difficult to say if they would achieve if they would have achieved that kind of success so for those who think it can get none more black, check, check out this background. I'm sure that someone in the world will be spinning this album. It, as you can see on Spotify, people still listen to this album by the masses world over and for good reason. Uh, like, subscribe. We will see you next time. Take care.